Hey guys, that's Letter Magic back, and uh, you may have noticed something that I just noticed while looking at my channel. It's been weeks since I uploaded a controversial video that got a ton of thumbs down and pissed everybody off, so, uh, well, that's what this one's about. And of course, it's not just controversial for the sake of controversial, it really is a very complicated problem, and that's what I like talking about, is really complex, complicated problems in the world of MTG. Now, as you may or may not know, just a couple months ago, I started playing Modern after a couple years of playing Standard, and uh, I do like it because it's more flexible. You don't just have to build what's sort of in Standard. Like, if there's no mill cards in Standard, you can't build a mill deck. So I thought, well, that's cool. It's expanded. Yeah, the decks are OP as crap, and you almost have to build a net deck to compete. But, you know, on the more casual side, which uh, one of my LGSs is... We can get away with all kinds of decks. You could do tokens or aggro or just combos or like all artifacts or all squirrels or just whatever you want. And you know, I like building whatever I want. You guys know I love building decks just in general. So of course modern would appeal to me. But there is of course one gigantic problem with modern. It is the number one problem far exceeding anything else that anybody could possibly complain about in modern. And uh, let's talk about the origins of it. It was only about five or six years ago that the original modern was actually invented as a format. Before Modern, they actually had another format called Extended, and it was um, standard but longer. So it had a, a shifting time period on it, and it was like, you know, two or three years back. Sometimes it was like, I think, seven years back. They kept changing the interval, um, but it did include older cards, but it did have a sliding scale. It did not have a static start point. So then they said, you know what? Let's just stop, you know, eliminating cards that are old, which is why they invented Extended. They didn't want cards to drop out of Standard and then just say, okay, they're worthless. You can play them in Casual and Commander, that's it. So they wanted like a real actual format, but then as soon as the card falls out of Extended, then it's the same story. So they said, let's just pick 8th edition as the starting point, because uh, certain things changed in 8th edition. Um, so prior to that, the R&D wasn't very good, and the card frame was designed a little bit different, and just a couple other reasons. And so they said, okay, that's the starting point, and from there on, you can use any cards that were printed since then. Now that was fine a lot closer to 2003, but now there are cards that are printed in 03, 04, 05, and even later that are just so stupidly rare because, you know, it's 10 plus years ago that they were printed, then nobody can get their hands on it because nobody knew to keep them. I mean, as far as they knew, with Extended, they were worthless. Plus, the cards that were Mythic in the first place were probably pretty powerful, pretty popular and Standard, but then they were printed at half the total numbers as a given rare card. So that's a big problem for cards that are, for example, Mythic and were only in one single set. Now, if they're printed multiple times, they're usually not that expensive. So let's take Snapcaster Mage as an example. It's not a Mythic, but it was a rare. It was only printed one single time. That was, of course, in the original Innistrad, and it was never printed again. Not in a dual deck, not in anything. I mean, unless it was some weird promo that I didn't know about. The Gatherer doesn't really uh, let you look that up, but I've never seen like an alternate Snapcaster, so as far as I know, it's just Innistrad, that's it. So that's uh, quite a few years ago. I mean, I've seen older cards, but it's long enough ago that it's not like everybody has Innistrad on their shelves. Now, the current eBay price of that card is right around uh, $40, so it's definitely not cheap. You definitely would run four of them in most decks, and uh, there are multiple popular decks that actually use Snapcaster Mage. So let's take that and multiply it by like 100. I mean, you got your Tarmogoyfs, you got your, you know, Vendillion Cliques, a bunch of the other Mythics from Modern Masters, those are all on my mind. So you've got a whole bunch of cards like that, that are rares or Mythics, and they're in the top 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 decks so if you really want to be competitive you want to play at a tournament level you're probably going to need one of those decks and that means you're going to need one of these cards so if you look at the top decks you're looking at eight hundred dollars nine hundred dollars like even a good burn deck with like you know the top of the line burn cards that give you the best chance of winning are actually about $900. Remember when Burn was a lot cheaper? Holy crap. I mean, you just look at classic decks, like even Jund, I think that one's up somewhere between like 1,000 and 2,000. Some of the configurations are like 2,200. You gotta be kidding me. So what the result is, is there's a huge barrier. It is just a money barrier to people starting playing Modern. So even if they just started playing Magic and they said, I want to play Modern, you know, I want to skip Standard, let's just play Modern. Holy crap, is that a sticker shock. Or even if they've been playing Standard for a while, like I have, and they just want to sort of move up to Modern because, you know, they want more complex mechanics and they just want to try it out. Well, I've always told people, you know, if you want to play Magic, yeah, it's going to cost some money. I mean, it's not a free hobby. It's not like hiking, which even that's not free. I can't even think of a free hobby. My God. How about, no, not bird watching, boy. 
breathing air. If you're a fan of breathing air, that doesn't cost much. But anything else, you know, you go fishing, it's it's expensive. You want to play paintball, it's expensive. You want to get into archery, it's expensive. I mean, you can play laser tag, it's expensive. No matter what you do as a hobby, it's expensive because hobbies are expensive. So you could keep standard reasonable between you know, a deck box and some sleeves and a moderately okay deck. You could drop 50 bucks and play with it for a good portion of a year. I mean, it's really not that expensive to play standard pretty competitively. But I mean, $2,000 for a modern deck? You could buy the fishing rod and the boat for $2,000. So what you get is this giant barrier to people entering the whole modern world. And um, the community and the company, Wizards, have both agreed that modern should keep going. It is a good thing. People enjoy it. It's a tournament level format, and um, you know it's not some wacky format that's just so weird and out there. It's it's just basically like another version of standard. You aren't going to see the Blitzkrieg format or Prismatic at a whole lot of tournaments, but um, you know modern is is normal enough that people want to play it and they want it to keep going. But for it to keep going, people have to actually be able to play it. And with that just ridiculous price tag on some of these decks or just some of the individual cards, like if, if you're trying to build a cheap deck, you're probably going to run into one of these like $20 to $50 cards and say, oh man, I have to build now a really second rate deck because somebody put this card in a really expensive popular deck and now the price went through the roof on it and I can't afford it. Or even if you could afford it, you might just not want to spend the money on that. I mean, I go to tons of FNMs and tournaments and all that all the time. It's a huge part of what I do and I still have trouble dropping like 200 on a deck because I'd rather be bu buying performance upgrades for my car, or, you know, cosmetic mods for it, or you know, some people have like pets; they'd rather spend it on their pets, or, or they're you know, upgrading their house, or you know, redoing the paint or something, or maybe you want to upgrade your computer instead, or you want to buy more games for your console that you have. So it's not about like economic level; it's about willingness to actually spend that much money. So for more and more and more people to get into modern, which is what everybody wants, they're going to need to do something about it. Now, with only about five or six years to work with, they really quickly actually developed something called Modern Masters. In fact, the very first Modern Masters actually came out in June 2013. So that's pretty darn shortly after Modern was officially classified in official format. Then in 2015, they hit it again with Modern Masters 2015 edition, or MM2. So the whole theory behind that and their, you know, wizard stated policy was that they're reprinting some of the cards just to drive down the price a little bit, uh, or at the very least keep the price the same, and then um, drive up the total availability of the cards and let more people get into modern who want to but don't want to, you know, spend an arm and a leg on it. So this sparked one of the biggest debates in the history of Magic. And uh, obviously I have a strong opinion on this because it's not even opinion, it's practically logical fact plus company policy at Wizards, but I thought I'd hit both sides of this argument just for the sake of this video. On one side, you've got the people who say, hey, I started Modern pretty early on, so I'm one of the early adopters, I helped promote it, I helped popularize it, I helped, you know, promote the format just by playing it, just by being a player that goes to events so other people can play it and tell all my friends about it and show off my Modern deck and tell them to play too. So I spent all that money on a deck, and now you're going to take my purchase and devalue it like 50 to 75% by reprinting all these cards just so that more people can play it when I'm the one who is getting more people to play it for you years ago. So naturally, I can see that side of the argument. I mean, come on, if you spent like $1,000 on a top, top deck and went to a tournament and, you know, a thousand other people showed up to the tournament because you all pitched in and made modern work... Then Wizards takes all the expensive cards, reprints them so that they make all the money, and then, you know, you're stuck with a deck that's now worth $200. So that's what they think that Modern Masters is doing. It's, it's taking too many of these super popular cards and just dumping them onto the market so that their decks slowly get less and less uh, valuable. Now, on the other side of the argument, you got people saying, you can't just not reprint cards from, like, 2004, for example, because it's not fair. I mean, the vendors are not going to magically summon more cards or, you know, find them hidden away under somebody's mattress. I mean, that happens occasionally, but if no cards are physically being printed, you literally cannot up the supply of them. You can just find more and put them on the market and that's it until there are no more. So what would be the end game of that? Well, Vintage and Legacy. I mean, if you take cards and you just never reprint them, wait 20 years and they're worth $1,000, you know, give or take. I mean, Elf and Beta was the first set, so, you know, not many people adopted the game. So that's a little different, but still, the prices are not going to go down. They're always going to go up, 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 and never, ever go back down unless somebody dumps a ton onto the market. But even then, it's still going to go upward in the long term. 
So the other side of things says, okay, people spent, you know, a bunch of money on a deck at one point because that was the current price of the cards. Cards go up and down all the time in standard, so cards could go up and down all the time in modern based on, you know, what decks are popular, what gets banned, and what cards are reprinted. You know, it's just three aspects of the same thing that makes the prices of cards go up and down, and that's just what it is. And the second aspect of this particular school of thought is that people need to be able to play modern, so it should be lower priced so that more people can play it. They don't really care if somebody's deck goes down because, you know, early adopters, whatever. It's kind of like technology. Early adopters, great. You paid more. Now it's worth less. Deal with it. And in fact, if you buy a car, it's going to go down in value. You buy a computer, it's going to go down in value. You buy just about anything to use, it's going to go down in value. Now, if you look at sports memorabilia or like, you know, even just sports cards or any kind of like a signed football from the NFL, that's going to go up in price if you don't quite literally use it as a football. You just leave it in a case and wait for the person to retire or go to the Hall of Fame or do something amazing or get mauled by a grizzly bear or whatever. Something that puts them in the news. I don't know. And then suddenly people are willing to pay 10 times the purchase value on any kind of sports memorabilia. So it's usually like use versus collection. And of course, modern players are buying these cards to use. I mean, if you bought cards solely for investment, you just took them straight out of the pack and just put them in like a top loader and left them there uh, because you're hoping the price goes up over time. Okay, then that's just a bad investment because you know cards go up and down and can get reprinted. So that so if you're like solely buying 2003 on cards for an investment, you probably should be buying like vintage and legacy cards as an investment. So modern is not an investment type of thing that you should be looking into. There are definitely better cards to choose from if you just want to lock them up in a safe and sell them 10 years from now. So since modern players are actually using the cards they're getting value out of what they buy they're going to tournaments they're going to friday night magic if you hold modern friday night so they're getting use they're getting value out of the deck so they spent the money on it but you know it's not like it's they're getting nothing out of it overall the game should be made more accessible so that more people can play it and enjoy it which is the point of any game i mean you don't just like release monopoly as a new board game and say ha screw it we're gonna raise the price by ten dollars every single year until nobody can afford to play it and the the early adopter is good for them and everybody else screw you you don't get to play naturally you could probably guess what side of the debate i'm on for this one sorry but the second opinion has much more logic and it completely trumps the the like surface logic of the complaints by the first camp of people Yes, it's not fair that Wizards is sort of taking money out of your pocket, but they're not doing it just out of greed. They're doing it so that more people can play the game. I mean, there's a purpose behind it, and it's to keep the game and their company alive. I mean, come on. They never guaranteed you that what you're buying, you know, three years ago would still be worth the same amount of money. Pretty much nobody guarantees that. I mean, you can go buy a, a pound of gold and you have no idea if it's going to go up or down. You can buy, like, artwork and you don't know if it's going to go up or down. So there's very few companies that say, yes, we will guarantee that this will go up in price. You'd almost literally have to buy a certified deposit at the bank. And then they'll tell you, yes, this will be worth 2% more in a year. By the way, if your bank has a 2% yearly CD, like, tell me about it. Holy crap. And the whole idea that you could just take a deck, spend a, an amount of money on it, and then you're good forever. The deck's always worth what it's worth. You never have to change decks. And... You could just keep playing it forever and that's all the money you ever have to spend on the game. Like, where did people even get that idea? That is so ridiculous in the world of Magic the Gathering. I'm just shocked every time somebody states an opinion even vaguely like that. The game is literally all about change and spending money over time. I mean, that's how the company stays in business. That's actually how almost every company stays in business, so I'm not sure why that's like a new concept to some people. So even in the case of something so ridiculously drastic as, let's say, Modern Masters 2017 containing almost every top card in Modern all at once, not necessarily Mythic... And that would probably cause, like, the deck value to go down just 75% across the board on the top 10 decks. I still think that would be overall a good thing. I mean, you're going to hear some complaining about it, but that's just, it's like, selfish. I mean, it's just people saying, it's all about me. Nobody should get to play modern but me. And I should never lose money on it ever. Like, I should basically get to spend $800 on a deck, play it for 10 years, and then sell it for $800. So it's like, oh, I get to play Magic for free, nobody else gets to play it because it's too expensive, and then anytime I want I can cash out and get all my money back. Like, what the hell is that? 
stupid is what that is. So I really just don't even respect people that are on the side of don't devalue my deck, bro, because it just doesn't make sense. I mean, it makes sense on the surface because like when I started saying their opinion, you're probably like, oh, yeah, that is unfair. Yeah. I mean, Wizards is just punched them right in the face and taken half their value. But when you really think about it and, you know, think about all the details and all the facts and all just everything, you take the whole situation into account. It's just ridiculous. So the whole devalue, oh my god, end of the world people, sorry, but I just don't agree with you at all. The majority of people who are at least remotely smart don't agree with you either because they get it. And it really is just truly based completely in selfishness. You know, it's all about them. They don't care about other players, you know, oh, if they want to play modern, they can get a thousand dollars too. You know, they, they just, they only care about themselves. And they, they don't care about the players. They don't care about wizards. They don't think wizards should make any money off of modern. Like, oh, you already got my money when I bought the set in the first place. And then I just kept the cards and kept them for modern. So tough nuts. You guys don't make any money off of modern. And that's the way it is. People like that tend to also be like really obnoxious. Like, like from all of my top 10 lists, they're usually like those people as well, where they're like try hard ragers who have to win. And you know, they cheat and just every, they're just bad people because you know, it's all about them. So not only do I not respect their opinion, I usually don't respect the people themselves. So the next time you find one of these uh, very common people out in the wild that are complaining about, oh, the devaluing of their deck and, oh, all the reprints and they're just killing everybody's decks and making them too cheap, just send them this video. Or don't because they're just going to leave a thumbs down and a, some whiny comment and I'm just going to have to delete it. Or reply with a big old truth bomb dropped on them, but... Uh, yeah, you could just at, at the very least tell them, hey, they're wrong. Other people want to play this format too. It's not all about you. And the cheaper it gets, the better it is for the game. Just tell them that. And if they don't believe you, they're just irrecoverably selfish, I guess. Now, if you have anything else to add to this debate, feel free to leave it down in the comments section because a lot of people go down there and read it because, you know, I'm not on Twitter. I'm not on Facebook. So it's the, the whole discussion forum is basically the comment section. And if you have a differing opinion than the one expressed in this video, then make sure you don't go to the comment section. No, I'm just kidding. I mean, you are intrinsically wrong and everybody knows it, but feel free to go down to the comment section and type about it anyway. And I'll see you guys next video where hopefully we'll light something on fire or blow it up. Still looking for a safe way to do that, though. And make sure you hit that subscribe button for two important reasons. One, because it'll help up the number of subscribers. And two, because as soon as we get to 10,000 subscribers, I'm going to be giving away some things. And they're things that you want, trust me. Are they rare? Are they expensive? Are they awesome? Are they custom and one of a kind? It could be all of them. I'm not going to ruin the surprise by giving you guys any hints, but I will say that you're going to want to watch for that. Trust me, you're not going to want to miss it. Also, we might have a little uh, sub competition on Xmage, so if you can, go install Xmage and get good with it as fast as humanly possible, because there just might be an upcoming competition where you have to beat me to get fantastic, fabulous, glittering prizes. Well, that's it for now, and I'll see you guys next video.